Hello viewers, I am Dr. Mehek and in this presentation we will be discussing about biofilms in ENT. I will be covering this topic under following headings that is introduction, biofilm life cycle, biofilm and antibiotic resistance, detection of biofilms, biofilms in ENT and we will be discussing about each disease in detail like chronic rhinosinusitis, biofilms in adenoids and tonsil, cholesteatoma, etc. And then we'll be talking about the treatment part. This is a very important topic. Each and every aspect of this topic is really important. So uh, we'll start this with introduction. So this is the definition of biofilm. You have to mug it up as it is. So it is a sessile colony of bacteria embedded within a matrix exhibiting unique phenotypic expression that interacts with immune system producing inflammation and contributing to disease refractory nature. Now the composition of biofilm is mainly, I am not discussing the history part of biofilm um, that is given in almost all the books but it is not very important, nobody asks about history. So uh, main main points I am discussing here. So um, talking about uh, the composition of biofilm, it has microbial, uh, microbial communities which has 15% of which constitutes 15 percent and we have extracellular polymeric substance matrix which constitute remaining part of biofilm so that is around 85 percent so now uh, top, uh, um, talking about the bacteria which are responsible uh, for uh, biofilm so there are multiple species of bacteria often coexisting with fungi that uh, will have a mutually beneficial relationship so there will be that is called co-metabolism between the various organism in biofilm that creates extremely diverse micro environment in terms of temperature pH nutrient av availability and oxygen tension that is why they are resistant to antibiotics. Now, uh, bio, the biofilm formation can occur by the redistribution of attached cell by surface motility or by binary division or by the recruitment of cell from the bulk fluid to develop to the development of biofilm. So there is always a interplay between organism and surface is involved for the formation of biofilm. So now talking about the biofilm life cycle, there are four, there are five stages in life cycle of biofilm, and uh, it is very very important that you should know all the five stages of uh, biofilm life cycle. First is bacteria adherence to mucosa electrostatically. So this is your planktonic form. Okay, I will be talking about it. And this here it is reverse. This stage is reversible. Then we have irreversible adhesion by chemical bonds. Then there is aggregation and formation of EPS. Then we have maturation of biofilm and bacterial detachment. So, uh, this is how the five stages of uh, biofilm life cycle looks. First is like I told, bacterial adherence to muco mucosa is there, that is a reversible. Then it becomes irreversible by adhesion, by chemical bonds. Then there is a, a, a formation of EPS, that is your extracellular polymeric substance. Then there is maturation of biostructure. And then there is uh, this... Uh, 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 then there is a detachment of bacteria okay now uh, talking about each stage first is bacteria adherence to mucosa electrostatically sorry um, mucosa electrostatically so this is uh, reversible and uh, reversible and um, it exhibits several behaviors such as rolling, creeping, aggregate formation. And then after this, there will be surface contact sensing, intercellular signaling and quorum sensing, which leads to irreversible procedure, uh, which uh, causes irreversible attachment. So the next stage is irreversible adhesion by chemical bonding. Okay, this is binding between specific microbial adhesion and the surface and it permits rapid transition between plank 
planktonic and sessile forms so your first stage is planktonic form okay and uh, then there is aggregation and formation of eps that increases the overall density and complexity and interaction between microorganism and um, eps will occur in this stage then there is maturation then uh, the growth of the bacteria increases the circulatory system for dividing of nutrients and removal of metabolic waste develops and they are not at this stage they are not susceptible to antibiotics and there are attachment of secondary colonizers that are other bacterias and uh, fungus and then we have bacteria detachment stage in this stage you have uh, the bacterial forms are released and it forms new biofilms and this stage is thought to explain so th this phenomena is seen commonly in clinical setting and it is thought to explain the periodic spice spikes in fever uh, in fever associated with device related biofilms infection okay and now coming to the uh, reason for biofilm causing antibiotic resistance that is due to altered environment okay since they have lot of bacteria and other fungus there is a shear stress osmotic stress and change in chemical gradient and also ph then there is a delayed antibiotic pre, uh, penetrance due to presence of EPS that limits the penetration of antibiotics. Then there are certain cells um, uh, in the heterogeneous population of biofilms. They are called as persister cells. They form core of bio. The core of biofilm has have small po subpopulation of persister persister cells and they are highly resistant to antibiotic action then there is altered genetic material that increased expression of biofilm specific resistance gene will be there and then there is a disruption of uh, mucociliary blanket so uh, now uh, this is very important these four names you should remember how to detect biofilm okay so there are four ways of detecting biofilm that is through uh, scanning these names four names you have to remember as it is that is scanning electron microscopy transmission electron microscopy fluorescent in situ hybridization then confocal laser scanning microscopy now talking about biofilms in ENT we have uh, uh, we can see biofilm most commonly is seen in uh, otitis media with effusion in cholestatoma then in tonsillitis or enlarged adenoids rhinosinusitis and in devices it can be seen in tracheostomy grommets and cochlear implant it is rare in cochlear implant where it's there so biofilm in uh, rhinosinusitis so in rhinosinusitis we have mucosal biofilm the form of biofilm what we have is mucosal biofilm and uh, and uh, that disrupts basically mucociliary clearance and because of this they are associated with worse post -oper if we operate in a patient with uh, rhinosinusitis having biofilms then it will have worse post-operative outcome after phase so the bacteria forming biofilms will be pseudomonas aeruginosa staph aureus streptococcus pneumoniae h influenza and m cateralis and in fungus you have uh, candida albicans okay um, and because uh, of candida albi albicans there is increased resistance uh, resistance to amphotericin b nistanin chlorhexidine so uh, that is seen if uh, biofilm is formed by candida albicans there is a study which says that and there can be a mixed biofilm also which contains bacteria and fungus fungus both then biofilms in adenoid and tonsil so uh, adenoidectomy is considered beneficial in children with chronic rhinosinusitis and uh, otitis media with effusion 
so uh, if we identify biofilms in adenoids and before going for adenoidectomy we treat the underlying cause it may uh, be helpful and it and, and there uh, the organism re responsible are staph aureus h influenza m cateralis and uh, streptococcus pneumoniae then um, biofilms in uh, chronic otitis media it is seen that there is absence and lack of secretory IgA that increases the bacterial adherence to epithelia and bacterial colonization in nasopharynx. So uh, even in adenoids, adenoids which are related with biofilms, we have uh, the, the study studies have been done and they say that there is there is lack of secretory IgA when uh, that is a protective mechanism when adenoids are associated with biofilms so similarly uh, absence and lack of secretory iga increases bacteria adherence to epithelia and bacterial colonization of nasopharynx that leads to resistant otitis media and we see uh, less level of iga and igg to be particularly if we talk igg2 is seen less in resistant otitis media then biofilms in otitis media with effusion and grommet so uh, uh, we used to consider that effusion uh, is a sterile material but recently the discovery of mrna and dna in culture shows that the uh, uh, in culture negative effusion shows that the uh, effusion is associated with biofilm and implicated as a cause of chronic post tympanoplasty tube and a tube which can cause refractory otoria and occlusion when the uh, tympanoplasty tube biofilm formation may be promoted by mucus and blood exposure during surgery so there is a study which says that if the blood uh, if the tube are exposed to blood during surgeries then there are more chances of biofilm formation then biofilm in infected cholestatoma so cholestatoma is associated with recurrent and chronic infection cholestatoma shows the presence of biofilm so pseudomonas exhibit strong adherence to keratinocytes and thus are very capable of biofilm formation the bacterial products may have a role in bony restriction caused by cholestatoma. Then biofilms in tracheostomy tube. So we mainly see uh, pseudomonas and uh, S. epidermis that forms the polysaccharide matrices that promote uh, biofilm formation. Now talking about the treatment strategies that is very very important. First of all if there is any device or cholestatoma that you have to remove it. Then you can even give low levels of electrical current or pulsed ultrasound that increases the antibiotic efficacy. Now most important is antibiotics are your fu furanons and uh, macrolides. So that uh, basically these interfere in n acyl homoserine lactose that disrupts the intercellular signaling at uh, biofilm level. Then macrolides disrupt quarant sensing. And then we talk if we talk about topical antimicrobial, their role is also very important. Like mupirocin irrigation is can inhibit the growth of staph aureus causing biofilm, and then honey can be used in staph aureus and pseudomonas biofilms and then surfactant containing agents such as citric combination of citric acid and zutter ionic can be used and then chemical surfactant so these can be used with saline uh, topical saline irrigation post operatively uh, in cases in cases of uh, rhinosinusitis and they are very very effective and they are cheap also so uh, th this treatment strategy you have to know uh, all the names and uh, this is very important for your viva as well as for your short question theory question so that's all guys each and every topic about biofilm is important especially your treatment part then your uh, uh, detection of biofilm can be asked in your viva all these four names you should know and then uh, how uh, 
it develops resistance from antibiotics and what are the stages life cycle of biofilm and the definition of biofilms uh, so thanks a lot that's all bye